What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're back with some more Wes Watson. Today's video is called Prison Gangs, Rock Bottom. He always calls them prison gangs or something similar to prison gangs, right? Even if he's not talking about it. Uh, I think it worked for a while, but I don't think it's working that good for him anymore. Let's see what he has to say today. Let's talk about Lowe's. Let's let's talk about Lowe's. Let's talk about Home Depot too. Is that what we're talking about? Lowe's and Home Depot. <laughs> Why does he put his beanie like that? We talked about that last time. I hope he's in a better mood. Again, we didn't make you put your beanie on like that. That's how the um the hipsters wear their beanies, no? He's a hipster convict. <laughs> Talk about the lowest of lows and why we as humans always have to consistently learn the lesson before we truly learn the lesson. Hmm? We have to learn the lesson before we learn the lesson. That was deep, homie. Let me hold on. Maybe I heard it wrong. Let me let's hold on. Learn the lesson oh. before we truly. Okay, I didn't go back far enough because this is. This, I guess, I don't understand. Let me see. Consistently learn the lesson before we truly learn the lesson. You would think getting sentenced to 10 years in the CDC system would have been enough. You would think that would be the ultimate low of someone's life. But let me tell you, it wasn't. It gets worse. Um, But... The good thing is, in this video, he's outside because he's using his outside voice. <laughs> you know, people keep getting at me and they're like, oh, you're jealous of Wes. He has a mansion and he has this and he has that. Um, Wes Watson is still putting videos out every single day and he's still in the high rise in those videos in San Diego. So, um, But hopefully he does a video in that that property that supposedly is his and that I'm pretty sure are his backers, you know, that's there something. I don't know, but I don't hate on him, but but everybody keeps throwing it in my face that he has a mansion and all those cars, but I always still see him in the high rise in San Diego, which that's still a good place, nice place. But I'm, I'm interested in seeing him, you know, do one hopefully tomorrow from his mansion. I've hit bigger lows than even the 10 year sentence while incarcerated. We will always get comfortable in our situation. And the crazy thing is, it was the same situation that brought me there. The second I had the lust for easy money again, while incarcerated, is when my biggest low of my life began. I started to get a taste for that easy money. We opened up a facility that was very easy to move about in. It was extremely easy. Okay, hold on. I think I've heard this story before. <clears throat> Everybody had to go to him for phones. So I'm sure he's going to talk about his phones, right? Um, he probably, I mean, everything, everything. The commissary, they ordered all the can. The prison ordered canteen through him. Uh, <laughs> but let's see if he's consistent. So I saw the loopholes and I had to capitalize. It was still in me. I was about six years into my sentence at this point and I started to get a taste for that. Six years in is when he started hustling. Huh. That, that quick success, that easy money, that instant gratification that always ends in our failure, our demise, it always screws us over. Mm -hmm. So. The white, the black, the green, everything started to make its way back into my life. And I started to find a way for it to support everybody in my life. Hold on. Wait, you ran phones the whole time. I remember the story, Wes. Now let's hold on. I probably missed something. So the white, the black, the green, everything started to make its way back into my life. And I started to find a way for it to support everybody in my life. 
The yeah. people around me in the pen, the people on the streets that needed my help. And I got that sense of power. Look, everybody needs me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it big. I'm still killing it even from here in the penitentiary. I mean, it's a true story, though. I mean, anybody knows um, when you're in there, the the amount of money that you can generate um, is pretty damn wild. Um, I'll say I had a guy that used to I don't like to get into all this stuff, but I will say, you know, I don't know where he was, where, but I had a guy that used to sell for me in there. Um, and he would bring me back 11 to 1300 per gram. That's great money. The thing is, is you don't always get all that money. You know, some people have to get hit because they can't pay your debt because, you know, they owe me and they owe every other dope dealer on the yard, you know, um, but it is still great money. I mean, money's money's flowing. It's unfortunate because, you know, they're using the money that their family sends them or whatever. Whatever their thing is. I had a guy that had a shop on the streets and uh, he was selling his tools in order to pay me. Did I care at the time? No, I didn't. But so it is lucrative. But I'm wondering what happened to the phones. Maybe that story wasn't true. I don't know. I mean, that swelled my <clears throat> ego. I was like, I could pay your rent from here. What? Like, who am I? I'm the shit. And I started to pump myself up. Now, getting pumped up like that led to some stress while doing stupid ass shit, which caused me to drink again. So I had someone making me batches in the building. One paisa over here making me a batch with some oranges. And, so, and just sugar and a, a batch of wine like that. A, whole, a white boy over here, pirate, making me a batch of wine with oranges and maple syrup. It almost tastes like whiskey. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're making Bruno. He wants to talk about oranges and sugar and oranges and syrup. I'm surprised he doesn't have white lightning. You know, that's it's a little bit more expensive, but it's cleaner and it's you don't have to drink as much. And I started to drink again. And that opens the door for me. The second I start to drink again and I get that buzz, here comes the white. And I don't want to say it. I didn't want to bring it up. But here comes the white. And since we had it on deck, a little bump, not tell anyone. I'm just going to do a little bump and not tell anyone. Turned into a massive line. Turned into busting out the foil and the candle. It got so bad to where the girl that I loved more than life itself, the person who I based most, most my strength on, the vision of my future, I had been waiting to talk to her for so long. And then on New Year's Eve, I'm telling you, you guys, New Year's Eve, this is how twisted I got. On New Year's Eve at 11.58, she calls and she goes, I love you, babe. And she's telling me all this. His ear got cold right there. Good shit. And I've been waiting to talk to her forever. In tears about her. Going through the longest, shittiest days. Thinking about what's she doing? Why doesn't she love me? Where's she at? Where's my letters? Thinking all this stuff. And then she calls on New Year's Eve at 11.58. And here I am. Bam, I pick up the cell. And we're smoking. We're smoking some shit. Some white. And I tell her, hey, and she's like, babe, I love you, da da da. And I say, hey, let me call you back. I hung up. I never even called her back. I, I never even called. Hey, we got a laugh out of him, a smile, and shit. Get on, Wes. Straighten your arms out now and then, though. You fuck, fuck around and cramp up, player. Called her back, and it, I don't even mean to laugh. It was so sickening to me because a couple days later, I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? And the whole thing is. You just didn't call her back. You just call her back when you remember. What, what is? No, has got to be. No, it's gonna. It's, it's build. He's building up. This is. This is what happens. Everybody I know growing up, they would get drunk. That white would come out. They thought it was okay. They seen the movie Blow. They've partied, and they they you know they go drink. They do a few lines or whatever. That that's like typical growing up in Southern California, San Diego. A lot of people once they get that buzz. 
they go straight to a fucking bump, you know, and that's that's. I'm glad he said a lot of people because I think originally right now he said everybody and then he narrowed it down to San Diego. I know a lot of guys from San Diego, they didn't use white. Uh, most were actually against it because of what it does to people. But, you know, this is his story. And um, let's see. Let's see. He looks like he's in pain right there, though. That's just the truth. This will ruin your fucking life because nowadays it, it turns into that speed. And then people are cut. People end up not being able to find that, or or they get in a fucking accident or something, and they end up doing that black. And that that's what happened. This is what happened to my brother. My brother's hooked on that speed. So we're halfway through this video, and he the worst rock bottom he ever hit. I swear he's gonna tell us what it is. I'm I'm in so much damn suspense right now. Really, I am. Like the fact that he doesn't have all the cell phones. Even though he told us he had all of them everywhere he went, that he was pretty much um, AT and T in within CDC. Um, I'm not even gonna let that throw me off because I just know, I know when he said the biggest rock bottom, it's coming. I'm into it. We actually have the same parole officer. Mm. So me and my brother have the same parole officer. He just got out of Chino, and then. He's been out for like three weeks. He already went back to that street life. Now he's on his way back to the pen on a violation. This is just that nasty revolving door of the penitentiary. And if you can't get your vices in check, Whew. you're done. All right. You're gonna keep learning the lesson till you Glad learn I don't the get lesson. High. You're gonna keep looking for happiness in yeah. the same place you lose it. No. It's fucking sickening. Yeah. So I know myself. I'm always gonna be an addictive, have an addictive personality, be an addictive person. So I had to trade those good addictions, those bad addictions for good addictions. What did you just say? The good addictions for the bad addictions for the good addictions. Nah, I'm just playing, I know what you meant. Once I- The beanie, it's the beanie. Traded my bad addictions for good addictions. I had a purpose. Now I had something that I truly was addicted to in a good way that pushed me forward, that gave me confidence. And it had the same effect without zero, with zero downside, zero downside, just positivity with the training, the nutrition, the structured program. This is how we get ourselves out of that rut when our addictions turn negative, when they start to run a train on us. This is how. What? What? Do people, do, do, does everybody understand what it means to have a train pulled on you? Oh, dear Lord. We get out of that. It was so bad in there to where I'd be up all night. I'd take a parachute of like a like a straight gram to the neck, parachute it, get on my phone, and be all up in my rack all covered up. And then the cops would be walking, so I'd lay down. And I'm laying down at count time. At count time, the cops walk through the building. So I'm on this end rack right here. and a That means he's in the dorm. The cops are walking by, and they're counting all the people in their beds. And I'm acting like I'm asleep. And my back muscle right here is just twitching like a motherfucker. Just dish, dish, dish. And I'm like, damn, this motherfucker can see this shit. And I'm driving myself insane. What the fuck? What the hell? So the cop sees his back muscle just dish, dish, dish. What does that mean? Yeah, muscle spasm. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to the rock bottom part, though. Insane at this point. That... This dude could see it. He knows I'm awake. He could tell I'm tripping. And, and I'm thinking, why, why is this fucker standing at the edge of my bed for so long? And I think the cop's still standing there to where I'm laying in my covers for like two hours, like waiting for him to leave. But he's left a long time ago. So this is how fucked I am in my head at this point. Been up for like weeks. So then they, the, the cop ends up leaving a while before, and I, I just... I can't take it no more, so I rip my covers up and I'm like, Motherfucker, what's your problem? Leave. And there's nobody there. There's nobody fucking there. <laughs> so he jumped up and yelled whatever he alle allegedly yelled. The guy that has all the dope on him, all the white, all the black, all the green, no phones at this point, no phones. And he's a, he's a shot caller. And he's tweaking out, panicking under his blanket. 
And then he jumps up and calls attention, calls heat to himself and the, the bed area in a dorm. There's no one even there. This is how sick I am in head. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going around the building telling my people fucking, at first I had dropped a mega sack and, and I'm tripping about that. And then, then I'm going around my building telling everybody, hey, there's a, there's like 15 fucking people upstairs in the, in the bubble with suits on. They're watching us. They're going to come hit the spot. They've been loping us forever. They're like, Wes, you're fucking, you've lost it. You've fully lost your mind. The guy that Wes told the story about and the guy caught time because of his story, didn't Wes said, say that they had to uh, discipline him before, for wigging out like that? Wig splitter. Shirt, the shirt makes sense today. Usually when, I don't know, man, I, again, he's in a dorm, but people start flipping out like that, they got to go. But maybe he had his beanie on like that, and they're like, nah, he's harmless. Like, go to bed, motherfucker. And like, I just got on that sick one. I was on the phone fucking with Tinder. I was fucking, I was on a sick one drinking. And I finally didn't even give a fuck no more. I would just do my workouts on a sick one by myself. Super. Oh, wait a minute. If I'm wrong, you guys are going to tear me up in the comments. But didn't he say he had a bice on one cell making him making him wine with oranges and sugar? Then he had a white dude, Pirate, he said was his name, making it at a, in a cell. But he's in a dorm. Huh. Super angry. Like it was and guys are going to tell me, you nitpick this and that. I'm listening. You got to understand. Excuse me. You got to understand. When you've been in prison your whole life, you, you pay attention to the words people say. So, you know, I'm just listening. Uh, but, yeah, there's no there's no cells in the, in the gym. Just It was just eating me alive. Mm. So this was the very last time that I just really fell. I, I finally just fucking gave up. I finally just fucking gave up even seeking any of that shit. Like, I mean, one of the worst times was is, is that... Like, I, I fell asleep with a sack on me, and I passed out. Like, and during count time, I woke up. I'm like, where the fuck's my sack, you know? I'm looking for it everywhere. And then uh, I look down <laughs> on my bunkie. He's below me, and it's sitting on his fucking chest. No bullshit. My sack is sitting on the dude's chest, and they just counted. And the cops could have walked by and seen that shit. But I just want to, I always want to tell you guys that I have these lows. I've used all that shit. There is a way out of it. Our lives don't have to be this consistent, pleasure-chasing, bitch-ass effect of us looking for happiness in the same place we consistently lose it and then blaming those around us. We can take charge. It's gonna be structure. You're gonna need that structure. You're gonna need people who overcame these habits. So since, since I've been there and I've overcame it, and I have a different mindset from it, I can help people who are going through it because I'm no longer in the mindset that's creating that addiction problem. I help people with it all the time. Just by being around people who don't even possess that trait, it starts to propel you in the direction you need to be in. I want, I want this for you guys. I did it. I fucking did it. And I okay, so he did get to the rock bottom. Rock bottom was he tweaked out a little bit too long. Six years into his prison term, got out about a year and a half later, and look at you now. You have a mansion that you don't even live in. <laughs> I want it for you. Stay fucking strong. Stay focused. That shit only ends in two places, and you know what they are. I seen too many people have to get that Narcan on them from fucking ODing on that black. I seen too many people just die off opiates. I don't want to see no more people do that. We can change I respect it. that. Stay fucking strong. Stay focused. Hey, Wes. Wes, uh, he ended pretty good there. I like that one. A lot of inconsistencies, but the message, I get the message. This time he's trying to be helpful, and, you know, he put his link up there. He can help you. Just click on that link. It might be about 250 bucks a month, but I'm sure you can pay for it and afford it, and it'll change your life um he did that but yeah no i like having fun with wes that the 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 west fans are gonna get on my ass they're gonna say i'm jealous really i'm not I, I, hey 
I've said it before, I support everybody on YouTube. As long as they don't have a sex crime, I support everybody on YouTube that is, is hustling and making this legitimate money, who is giving back. That story, to me, is hilarious, but because I lived in that lifestyle. But for those that didn't, it may motivate you. Anybody on YouTube that used to be a crook, a criminal, he's an ex-con, whatever, as long as they're not hurting the community, victimizing the community, robbing, stealing, shooting, stabbing, I support them. That's the bottom line. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down and let me know what you didn't like about it. I appreciate your time. I don't remember if I said it at the, at the beginning, but new video. By the way, um, as I said, I got a new microphone. Those of you that like uh, the sound of it, if you're into podcasting, whatever, uh, creating content, I'll put the link in the description. It's the Blue Yeti. Also, if you shop at all through Amazon, and you want to help the channel through that way, all you would have to do is click on the link in the description. You don't have to buy the Blue, Le Blue Yeti, but you shop through that link and it helps the channel. I'll still get a commission. So I appreciate your time. Everybody stay safe, stay smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.